Hello and welcome to another Excel demo with Rich Kerr. In this scenario, we're going to take a look at the powerful database functions to help us aggregate and summarize uh, data in our spreadsheet. So to set up, I have a list of data here on the left uh, where I've got, I guess, 50,000 rows of data um, and columns with names like customer, location, etc. Uh, with a date column and an amount column. And uh, I want to be able to quickly aggregate, for example, the total amount for, say, uh, claims uh, based out of Paris or uh, claims that were based on rehab services um, or rehab claim and the service provided was analytics. Uh, what's the total there? Or from a date range. And there's obviously a few ways to get at these kinds of aggregate results. One way would be to do a pivot table. But if I just want to pluck out a few aggregate numbers based on a set of criteria without creating yet another table of data with a pivot table, uh, there's a number of functions that will help me get there. So uh, what I've done is taken a copy of the headers except the claim ID and uh, I've pasted it over here to the right. And you may notice I have two instances of the claim date column. Uh, and we'll see why that might be useful here in just a moment. So I've got my main data set over here, which is also a named range called claim info. And then this range of data here, I've named claim criteria. Uh, so that's gonna just simplify the formula writing through the use of named ranges. So let's look at the first one here. Um, what this area over here lets you do is set up a set of criteria to limit what data is being summarized on the left. So right now I have no criteria. So what I'm getting with my formula here is the grand total, which is the data in column I. And if I select all that data, we can look at the auto calculate function and see that it's 274 million 995. Uh, so we see that number here through the use of something called the dsum function. So with dsum, there are three components. There is the database, uh, which is the data on the left hand side. So I've got that claim info data over there. Um, then uh, I1 is the cell being uh, or the field is how it's referenced in the database functions. Uh, the field that I'm going to sum is the amount field. So I've actually selected uh, I1, which contains the word amount, which is that header. Uh, you could alternatively actually type the word amount in quotes like this uh, and get the same result. Um, and then the third component is the claim criteria. So I've set this little range up over here up as a named range called claim criteria. I'm actually going to go back to using the reference to I1 here. It just is my preferred method, but either way works. So we get the grand total, but what if I just wanted to see the total for claims out of, uh, let's say, Paris? So I'm going to come under my location criteria header and type Paris, and then we see it goes down to 27 million. 496. So what's happening is the dsum function is using this criteria value under the heading location to limit which values are being summed up over here. So only rows where it says Paris in the location column um, are being are being summed up. Now you might also think about using a count if function or if you have multiple criteria you would use count ifs. But here's an advantage of dsum. If I were doing a, a sum if, let's actually just illustrate. If I did uh, total and I wanted to use the sum if uh, function, so I would say sum if, and I'd have a range. I'd select uh, column C, comma, and uh, my criteria is the word Paris, and then my sum range uh, is column I. Not a complicated formula, and I'd get the same result. Um, but here's, here's where it starts to get different. So let's say I want to add another set of criteria. So let's say I don't want to just look at the sum of claims out of Paris, but only if the analyst is Monica. So I could come over to my analyst cell in the criteria range and type Monica here. 
So in the case of the d sum function, I don't have to change the formula. Whereas with the sum if, sum if only supports one criteria. So I'd have to change this to a sum ifs, plural. Then I'd have my sum range, comma. Criteria range one is the location column. And my criteria would be Paris. And then criteria range two would be the analyst column. And my criteria would be Monica. Now, obviously this one is a little harder to read because it's also, it's not using named ranges. Uh, but we certainly could do that. I mean, we could name these columns and use, name, use named ranges. And that would simplify its look even further. But the difference is every time I want to add a different uh, or additional criteria with uh, the D sum function I don't have to change the formula so if I now come under uh, say status and type the word open it also further it affects my D sum result whereas here with the sum ifs I'd have to come into the formula I'd have to now put another comma and select the status column comma and my status would be open so every time I change the structure of my set of criteria, I'd have to modify the sum ifs formula, whereas I would not have to do so with D sum. So that's an advantage. Now let's look at some similar functions. If I want to know the average, right, that would simply be equals D average. And uh, the formula is going to work the same way. My database is that named range called claim info comma my field is going to be the amount field that's the field that i'm averaging so that's cell i1 and then finally my criteria range again which i actually named so i just claim criteria okay and so we have the average if i want to know the count you know the number of claims uh from paris that are open and the analyst is monica then we would use d count Again, the same range called uh, claim info, comma. Now, with the count function, I could count any one of the columns as long as it doesn't have a blank. It would be a good candidate for counting. So, for example, let's say one of my orders didn't have a claim type listed. Like if there was a blank in column D, I wouldn't use column D for counting. So if you have like a, like, a, like an identifier, like a primary key, like a claim ID or something like that, where you know on every record there's a value, I'd probably use that cell to do counting. Uh, otherwise, again, blanks would be skipped. So I'll say A1 here for my count, and then comma, and then claim criteria, and there we go. So 417 <coughs> of the claims are Paris, Open, Monica. Then we've got uh, the largest claim. So one of the largest claim, that would be D max. Same setup, claim info, comma, I want the largest based on the amount. So I1 and then comma, claim criteria. So my largest claim out of Paris that's open where the analyst is Monica is 10, 4, 90, 20. And then we have smallest, I'm sure you've already surmised, would be D min. Same structure, comma I1 comma claim criteria. So there we go. So the database functions can in some ways be a bit more flexible than count ifs, sum ifs, and average ifs. Now depending on what version of Excel you have, if you have a more recent version of Excel, you may also have discovered the max ifs function and min ifs which work like D max and D min, but they also sub suffer from the same limitation. That is, if I move from, say, two criteria to three, or four criteria down to one, you have to change the formula. Whereas with these database functions, you do not, you see a separate range where your criteria will be listed. Now, why did I do two different claim dates? Well. <laughs> or, or two separate criteria cells for claim date. So let's say I wanted to find um, all of the Paris 
claims where the status is open and the analyst is Monica, but the claim date was, say, uh, after September 1st of 2016. So, well, let's just say I want to say September 1st. Well, you could just do a simple date, 991 2016 and there's two transactions or two claims that match that. Well, what about everything after 9-1-2016? So greater than or equal to 9-1-2016. And then you get different results. Or if I wanted to say everything in the month of September 2016. So I've got one uh, criteria against claim date that says greater than September 1st or greater than or equal to. I could have a second that says less than or equal to September 30th of 2016. And so that limits it further. So that's why I put the two claim date headers there so I could do a range. So that's a strategy that you could use if one of your criteria values is numeric and you want to kind of do a, a between kind of functionality or criteria. So there you go. Let me just throw that first one back up there, the D sum formula. I have D sum and a database or range of data. <clears throat> Then I have a reference to a field, which is basically just the label at the top of a column, in this case I1, and then a comma, a second range, uh, which is where your criteria values are entered. Uh, and then the rest of the functions work just like this. So it's kind of nice about these. If you know D sum, then it's very easy to then do D average, D count, D max, and D min. Uh, so I hope you found it useful. Please come back soon for more Excel demos with Richard Kerr. And by the way, uh, please click that subscribe button so you'll be up to date when we add new videos to the channel. Thanks for your support. I appreciate it. Have a productive day. Peace.